Welcome back to The Whole Home. I'm Kezia and today we're going to talk about these ducks. Why we chose the ones we did, why we went for ducks instead of chickens, and what we've learned so far. Don't eat my mic. Don't eat my mic. We first got poultry about seven years ago when we lived in California and like most people do, we started with chickens. Do you want to go and join your friends? They're that way. Chickens are the way most people tend to go for backyard poultry and they're where we started about seven years ago when we first got birds. I didn't really consider anything else. Chickens are what you get if you want eggs, so that's what we did. And we had a range of experiences. We responded to an ad on Craigslist for you catch chickens and my sister and I spent an afternoon running around a dusty farm trying to catch chickens which the owner then said I think they're all girls we brought these birds home and slowly they got bigger and bigger and most of them turned out to be boys which was a fun experience because then we had too many boys to girls and they crowed all the time we had a bird go broody and lay eggs and sit on them and hatch a chick then a snake came in and ate the chick and all the eggs it was in california it was devastating the kids got to really see the circle of life which i actually appreciate we learned a lot but we really loved having birds we loved the responsibility of going out in the morning and checking on them and feeding them of the kids having to do that when they liked it and when they didn't like it when it was cold and dark and also when it was happy and springy and seeing the whole thing and being responsible being close to where our food comes from knowing the whole supply chain and how the animals are treated in terms of where our eggs come from hello we really loved it in 2019 when we moved from california to england we missed having birds and we got some chickens again this time we went with a reputable poultry farm that was close to us treated the birds really really well and we did another four years with chickens a year ago we moved into this house and we knew we wanted to have birds again and we were planning on going with chickens so why did we change our mind and go with ducks the thing that made me think about it is that at the bottom of our garden, we have a seasonal pond. We kind of live on a floodplain. And so through the whole of last winter for months, we had a big pond at the bottom of our garden. And it made me think, how can we use this watery area well? I wish we had ducks. And so I began to think, huh, I wonder if ducks would be a good use for this space to be able to forage when nothing else can through the winter and it made me research ducks. So initially I was inspired by the pond, but it got me thinking that maybe ducks could be a really good option. And it seemed like there were a lot of plus points. Now we're only five months in, but we couldn't have a rooster with our chickens, a cockerel because of the noise in a neighborhood, regardless of zoning, it's just not sociable. Having ducks gave us the option to have a drake without that noise. Ducks do quack, but you don't have that big loud wake up noise in the morning. So I thought maybe that could be an advantage. Then they, especially the breed we went for are very, very good foragers, which means even when they're laying declines, my feed bill is going to be less. They're great foragers, they're out, they're eating less food. We'll talk about how much we've spent on food. They have been very cheap so far. They can also use that pond area at the bottom of the garden. We can raise our own young if we want because we have the drake. We may have to pull eggs and put them in an incubator. They don't tend to be great moms, these ducks, but that's fine. And in being very good foragers, major plus point, they, they are really good at eating slugs. They have decimated the slug population of our garden, which has really helped our garden this year. So, so many plus points in having ducks, which meant I decided to go for it. There are so many different breeds of ducks, but I wanted a smaller, lightweight bird, which Khaki Campbells are. We have a third of an acre, which they do roam, but if we wanted to keep them enclosed, I wanted to have adequate space for them if we kept them enclosed for safety. And in England, we have avian flu restrictions. So for certain periods of the year, they have to be enclosed. So that was really a, f a factor for me in size. So a lightweight bird, they're also dual purpose. So they can be used for meat and for eggs. We're not gonna start using them for meat, but I wanted that option. They are prolific layers, so 300 plus eggs a year, which was really important to me. I wanted it to work for us in terms of paying for food and raising them and also getting the eggs that we needed. They are very good foragers. They are hardy, good foragers in a range of climates. So I knew that they would require less food, be really good in the garden, eat our slugs. And we went with ducklings because I really wanted the kids to have the chance to see them raised from ducklings and to experience that. I just thought it would be fun. Now, the one disadvantage with Cocky Campbells is they can be really skittish. And that was another reason that I wanted to raise them from ducklings so that they were hand reared and they were familiar with us. And I can promise you, they are the furthest thing from skittish these ducks they absolutely love us okay 
The duck I was holding at the beginning of the video is not a cocky Campbell. He is our drake and he is a Cherry Valley drake, a Pekin duck, your traditional, your more traditional backyard duck. Because I had set my heart on having cocky Campbell ducks, I had to go a long way to find them. These were so hard to source. I really wanted to raise them from day old ducks and I could not find them anywhere. The closest ones I could find were three-ish hours from our house. My husband was already going up to the north of England for a cornhole tournament. So we drove up together and we went and collected these four little cocky Campbell ducks. Well, I wanted a drake because the ducks are happier with the drake. And the farmer said, I only have one drake left. He's a Cherry Valley, but I'll give you a really good price. I was looking at 20 plus pounds per duckling when I was looking for ducks. And he said he would give me 50 pounds for these five ducklings as long as I took the drake as well. So I wanted a drake. I couldn't find a cocky Campbell drake. So I went with a Cherry Valley drake and we brought home these five little fluffy ducklings. Oh, yes. <laughs> I wanted to buy as little as possible and keep my startup costs as low as possible. So the things we started with were a heat lamp. I bought it for 15 pounds off Facebook Marketplace. You got to be careful with safety and heat lamps and things like that. Do your research. But I used a reptile lamp, which worked really well for them and a plastic tub that we already had. Then I used some old towels and for water, this worked so well, we used a cooling rack over a paint tray. It worked perfectly. Ducks are very messy and this was definitely our experience. Much messier than chickens, especially as ducklings. They, they dunk their whole head in to drink and then they throw water and food everywhere. So you can get a really messy situation. So that was the perfect setup. We kept them inside the house for about two weeks. And then it was time for the ducklings to get their first little trip outside. They still need the heat lamp, so they couldn't be outside for that long. And we waited for a warmer day so they didn't get too cold too quickly. But they loved being out on the grass and it was so much fun to watch them experience the world and the grass and the caterpillars they're finding there on the hedge. It was a really fun moment. And then before they got too chilly, we pulled them inside and put them back under the heat lamp. And we made them a water feeder from a big vinegar jug. This was something I saw people do online. It was really, really good for minimizing mess. And I just used tubs we had for food. So it was a real makeshift DIY situation, but we really didn't need to buy very much. I then used, I had some foam padding that worked really well to have them on, kind of like neoprene, which worked really well to stop them slipping and to keep it clean. I could just hose them off. It was honestly a really lucky, great first duckling setup. We had them in the house with us for about two or three weeks and then we moved them to an outbuilding. We have a few little outbuildings here, which were perfect. They still needed the heat lamp. It was cold, but they were just too big to have in the house. So definitely I would think about where you're gonna put them when it's too cold for them to be outside, but they're maybe too big to still have in the house. I was realizing, cause we don't have a garage. If we hadn't had a shed outbuilding, it would have been tricky to know where, we, where to put them. Once all their feathers came in at about six weeks, they moved to being fully outside and without heat. They now live in a dog kennel, which is perfect because they've got the indoor and the outdoor space that they can have when we're not here. In England and maybe other places too, you do need to think about avian flu restrictions. So you need to have a setup where they can stay inside 
protected from any wild birds for potentially a long portion of the winter. I think a few years ago we saw three or four months of avian flu restrictions. So you need to make sure you have some kind of space where they can be happy and have enough space to live 24 seven without coming into any contact with a wild bird. So that's a massive thing you have to think about in this country. And we are gonna build them a second space as well. But for now, through the summer, we've had this great dog kennel that we're using, it's been brilliant. We have a tub for them in their enclosed space and a tub for them outside. Now, these ducks don't need a pond, but they do love somewhere to splash. They do need to be able to fully dunk their head to drink. So you need to think about that. They do really want somewhere to splash, but a kiddie pool or something like that can be great. Also, if you are looking to breed them, ducks typically have more success mating in water. So that's just a consideration too. So that's our setup on where they live. They also free range. So whenever we're at home, they are free ranging. We let them out in the morning. We put them back at night. Ducks can see in the dark, so they don't have the natural instinct to go back in. So we have to herd them back in to the house, to their house each night, but then they go back in. They're there till the morning and they are very quiet if they are completely shut up. Once we let them out in the morning, they do a good bit of quacking, but it's never that loud cockerel noise, but they are chatty. In terms of free ranging, they have done so well with the garden. So a couple of times they've got in a bed and scratched it a little bit, but a couple of times in five months and the smallest little fence around the edge or cover on top has protected the plants from them where they've wanted to go in them. For the most part, they don't touch them at all. So they have been brilliant for the garden and they eat so many slugs. It is incredible. We, the slugs were destroying our plants until we let the ducks free range. And then we have had no problem with slugs since then. So from a slug point of view, highly, highly recommend ducks. They have been brilliant for that. In this size of a garden, we've had five ducks and it's been brilliant. They're also really good foragers in terms of how much food they eat. They have cost me about 10 pounds a month in food. We're now doing organic food for them now. They're laying and they are costing us so little. We feed them a bit in the morning and a bit at night. And they're honestly not interested in their duck food. There's food up there, but they really are just foraging all day, which is amazing because that was my goal in getting good forages, both that they help the garden and that they reduce our food cost. An upside for the garden and having ducks is that duck manure is ready to go on the garden. So chicken, chicken manure is considered hot and it needs to wait before it can go on the garden. Ducks can go straight on to the garden, which is great. So we have their pond. We then use that water, which they've sat and pooped in. We put that onto the garden as fertilizer. We can also take the straw that's their bedding and put that on the garden and it doesn't need to compost first. It's great fertilizer right away, which is amazing for the garden and their temperament. So I panicked so much. Right when we picked them up, I saw someone on Instagram that I follow who has a farm say she had the worst experience with Cocky Campbells. They were skittish and horrible to have and she would never do it again. So I messaged back and forth with her and she told me she hadn't raised them from ducklings. So I crossed my fingers and really hopeful that we would be okay. We have got the opposite of skittish ducks. They love being around us. We have French windows on our house and they will trot all the way up to the back of the house and sit and watch us in the evening through the glass. They love the kids. They will come right around them. They try and steal food. If we eat outside, they are right there and they love us. I love that they love being around us, that the kids love them, that they love the kids. They're very calm and docile. They've never tried to hurt us or be aggressive or anything like that. They're just really friendly and I love that. So I would highly, highly, highly recommend having them from ducklings if you choose to go with ducks. The downside of them being wherever we are and coming up on the patio is that they do poop everywhere. Obviously anywhere, anywhere they go, they are making dirty. Now, it can be sprayed down and you can choose to section off where you have them. I don't mind spraying down our patio for the sake of just letting the ducks completely free range. Sometimes we will block it off, um, but you are gonna have that wherever they are, you will have duck poop. So you just have to choose where they're gonna go in your space in terms of how you feel about that, what you're prepared to hose down, what you don't mind being a little bit messy while they're there. They are coming up on five months old and we have just started getting our first eggs. I was not expecting this because everything about Cocky Campbell says five to seven months, they will start laying eggs. But my daughter was doing a little video of the garden, popped into their coop and said, dad, they laid an egg. These are my duckies. <gasps> dad, they laid an egg. We've now had an egg consistently every day since then. We've used the eggs in baking. They are great 
they are higher in fat and they are higher in protein. They are delicious. I'm excited that we're now getting duck eggs. This was the goal. I am editing this here to add, everyone always says duck eggs are different and this has been my experience in the past that I would bake with them but not eat them fried like this. However, since recording this video, we have been eating them like this and we would never know the difference. All in all, we have loved having them. There has really not been a downside. They have been kind to the garden. They have eaten all our slugs. They have been cheaper than chickens because they're such good foragers. They have provided so much enjoyment for us. The drake is quieter than having a rooster and the kids love them. And they're now giving us great eggs. So I 100% would recommend at least considering ducks and weighing up ducks versus chickens if you're looking at backyard poultry. But you can follow along with the journey. We love them. I post about them all the time because they've brought so much joy to our garden. If you want to stick around and watch more, we have two beehives down there. And in this video here, I took you inside a weekly bee check to show you what's inside the hive. If you want to follow the journey, hit follow, and I will see you in another video sometime soon.